Hello everyone! I'm travelling around on a very special fun bus today. This double-decker bus has been transformed into a soft play party bus. This is Paul and he's the driver of the bus. He drives to lots of different places for children's birthday parties. You can have a party anywhere! Here comes the bright yellow party bus now. Welcome aboard the party bus. There are two floors on this bus. A downstairs and an upstairs. Let's climb the stairs and take a look upstairs first. Whoa! It's so much fun up here. There's a tunnel. A rope bridge. These are called biffers and bashers. Hey, Red Mechanical, how did you get in here? Red Mechanical never misses a party. To get down, we can either go back down the stairs or we can go down the mega green slide. Go on, Red, you can test it out. Woo! When you come down the green slide, you land in a colourful ball pool. Look! Red Mechanical is holding a green ball. This is an orange ball. And here's a purple ball. The fun doesn't stop there. Downstairs, there's more places to run around and climb. Paul's getting the bus ready for a party, so it's time to connect the bus to a generator. A generator is something that uses fuel to generate electricity. That means Paul can turn the disco lights and music on in the bus. Here come the kiddies now, ready to party. Running round the play bus, everyone's very hungry, so it's time for some party food. These tables upstairs are just right for enjoying some sandwiches. Paul places yellow paper plates on the table. One, two, three, four, and again. One, two, three. Four yellow paper plates. Now Paul is placing down orange drinks. One, two, three, four. And they need red straws. One, two, three, four. Four red straws. Yum, yum. Before everyone leaves, there's one last thing to do. Give out the party bags. We can't have a party without party bags. On Gecko here. I've got something amazing to show you today. Cranes! Whoa! They're brilliant 
at taking things way up high into the sky. If you've ever seen a tall building being built, then you might have seen a crane. They're not very good at hiding. They can almost reach the clouds. And they're able to lift heavy objects onto the tops of buildings. Cranes are so cool! This is a 250 ton mobile crane. It's massive! And do you see the long arm that's sticking up into the air? Well, that's called the boom. There's lots of different types of cranes, but let's see what makes this one special. Whoa! This yellow crane's got loads of wheels. Maybe as many as Larry the Lorry. This means it can drive down the road to all sorts of construction sites. They're places where buildings are built. But I wonder, how does it go under bridges with that really tall boom on top? That's it, Blue. You fold it away. This is Ian, and he's the operator of this crane. The crane can move up and down, and left and right, and it's all controlled from something called a cab. That's where Ian sits. He can use both of these joysticks to control the boom and the hook it has on the end. That looks like a fun job. Can you see what he's doing? By pulling the joystick in his left hand backwards, the boom is shrinking. Wowzers! The boom's made up of seven separate pieces which all fit neatly inside each other. A bit like a Russian doll. Look at that! The boom is all packed up. These are called the outriggers. Just like stabilizers on your bike, they stop the crane from falling over when the boom is up. To get the crane ready for driving, we need to fold the outriggers away. Ian uses this control panel to fold them up, making them disappear inside the side of the truck. Bye-bye, outriggers. The outriggers were sitting on special mats, which stopped the super heavy crane from cracking the floor underneath. Ian neatly packs them away at the back of the truck. Wow, that's brilliant! Now Ian can jump in the front cab and press one final button to balance the truck. Ready for driving! Can you see it wobble? Look, it's rising up! And now it's ready to drive! Off we go! Ian's had the call! And we're now on our way to a construction site to help the builders. Down on the construction site, they're building everywhere. But when the building gets too high, they all take extra care. Here to save the day is the massive yellow crane. It's time for the boom and hook to come and take the strain. Lift it high. Lift it, lift it, lift it high. 
I'm here at Claremont Farm today to learn all about tractors. Tractors are the most important vehicle on the farm. They help farmers like Andy and his family do really big jobs, like planting a whole field of potatoes. Let's get out on the road! Oh dear, I think I'm on the wrong tractor. Andy? Ah, here's Andy now, with a much newer blue tractor. Andy, can you show us round your beautiful tractor, please? OK, the front of the tractor. These are the heavy weights. So if we're picking up machinery at the back, we don't want the tractor to flip up. So these keep it all straight and on the ground. These are our lights. Sometimes we have to work at night and we need as much light as possible. So not only do we have the headlights, but we have spotlights at the top as well. This is the exhaust pipe. We don't want the exhaust at the back with all the machinery, so we keep it up front here and it's high so we're not breathing in the fumes. This is the huge tractor tyre with big tractor tread here. If it's really wet and muddy in the field, we need as much traction as possible because we don't want to be slipping. The back of the tractor. This is where we connect all the implements. This is called three-point linkage. One, two, three. This goes down and picks the machinery up at the back. And this is my tractor. Thanks, Andy. Tractors can drive on roads, but muddy fields are where tractors can really get to work. The huge wheels mean they'll never lose grip, no matter how sticky it gets. But that doesn't stop it being really bumpy. Whoa! In the spring, it's time for the farmers to get into the tractor and plant some seed potatoes. They drive in straight lines, creating these lovely neat rows. Imagine doing all of this planting by hand. It would take ages. But luckily, with the help of a tractor, you can plant a whole field in just two days. Deep under the ground, those little potatoes are busy spreading and growing into lots of new potatoes all throughout the year. Farmers rely on the changing of the seasons. Spring, summer, autumn and winter to help their crops grow. It's now autumn and the leaves are falling off the trees. Out in the fields, we're going to be using the tractor to dig up the potatoes that we planted. They've been growing all summer long. You can put all sorts of different equipment onto the back of a tractor and today, the farmer's attaching a huge potato harvester. Now we're connected, it's away we go! The tractor pulls along the harvester as it pulls out the potatoes from the ground. The potatoes shoot up through the harvester and make their way down this conveyor belt where the farmer checks all of the potatoes. He throws away any bad ones. Once all the potatoes are collected, the harvester lifts them up and tips them into a trailer. The farmer then hooks up the trailer and takes the potatoes back to the farmyard. Back at base, the farmers open the trailer up and push the potatoes onto another conveyor belt that creates a massive potato mountain. Think of all the mashed potato you can make out of that. Now let's have a look at how you drive a tractor. So this is my tractor cab. This is my steering wheel. And all modern tractors now have power steering, which means that it's easier to turn the big wheels in the field. Here, this red lever, this means the tractor can go forward or back. Forward or back. Here, this is where we turn the lights on. On this side, we have the hare and the tortoise. This is slow and this is fast. We have 15 different gears. 
on a tractor. It's from very, very slow to fast on the road. So, do you remember seeing that big mountain of potatoes? Well, we can't see them now. And here they are. So we have to cover the potatoes with straw. The straw keeps them nice and warm to stop the frost getting in during the winter, but it also stops the light getting in. If a potato sees the light, it turns green and then we can't eat it. So it has to be completely dark. Once the potatoes are ready, they make their way to the kitchen where they're washed, peeled and chopped into chips by the chefs in the kitchen. Look at that! Fresh potatoes straight from the field and onto the plate. Yum! I've loved learning all about the different jobs that a tractor can do on the farm. Without these amazing vehicles, farmers wouldn't be able to grow all of those tasty vegetables that end up on your plate. Gecko here! Have you ever seen one of these before? It's a concrete mixer! These amazing construction trucks are used all over the world to help build roads, houses and even schools. But how do they work? And why does this big drum have to spin around? Come on, let's find out! These big trucks are perfect for carrying and delivering a material called concrete. There's some wet concrete on the floor there. Watch out, Blue Mechanical! But what is concrete? Concrete is a mix of sand, water and cement. Cement's a bit like glue. Something amazing happens when you mix these three things together. They become concrete. And when it's dry, it's as hard as rock. Uh, Blue, were you paying attention to what I was just saying? Concrete is rock solid when it sets. Oh dear Blue, it looks like you're stuck fast. This is why concrete mixers are the only trucks that can carry concrete. To stop it from setting and turning rock hard, you have to keep mixing it. This is the drum, and it's where the concrete is stored. Connected to the drum is a gearbox and motor, which spins it this way and that way. Rollers on the other end of the drum keep everything turning nice and smoothly. This part here is called the hopper, and it's where the concrete gets poured into the drum. There's Danny. He's the driver of this truck. He's off to pick up a fresh batch from the concrete plant. He reverses carefully into the loading bay. To load up, Danny has to perfectly line up the hopper with the loading chute. Up in the plant control room, they can create just the right mix for Danny's batch. Then it's time to load up. Whilst he's waiting, Danny tops up the onboard water tank. It's very important to have plenty of water on board, because clever computers inside the mixer test the concrete. They can add more water if it starts to get a bit too dry. It's a bit like porridge. Too dry or too wet, and it's no good. Just like Goldilocks, we want it just right. We're fully loaded, so let's go! Mechanicals! That's a very dangerous place to stand. 
You should never stand that close to a big truck like this. And even with all his mirrors and cameras, Danny can't see you there if he's turning. It's much safer to stand further away from the mixer. The drum is turning and we're heading to Danny's customer to drop this load off. At this huge factory, they make massive buildings out of concrete. So they need lots and lots of concrete mixers visiting all the time. Inside the drum, there's blades that mix the concrete as it turns. To empty the load, Danny makes the drum spin the opposite way, which pushes the concrete mix out. The concrete is emptied into this big container, which can be moved around the factory with huge cranes. They're using this mix to build a wall. The concrete is poured into this ready-made mould, which is just the right size for the wall. Just a few days later, and the concrete has properly set. Now it looks a lot more like a wall. The walls are then loaded onto this big lorry, ready to be delivered to the construction site and turned into a building. The last part of the process is for Danny to wash out the hopper, ready for the next batch. Some of my mechanical friends are trying to get back to Gecko's garage today, so I think we should go and pick them up on this amazing Arriva bus. Buses are fantastic vehicles. They carry lots of passengers around town and take people to places they need to go. Buses have lots of space inside to fit as many people on as possible. What shape is this bus? Yes, it's a rectangle. Look how many seats are in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 seats! Wow! And when the seats are full, there's even places for people to stand. Look, you can hold on to these handrails. And these grab handles too, to make sure you don't fall over when the bus stops. This is Mary, and she's the driver of this bus. Mary's just going round the bus to do all of her safety checks before going out on the road. What shape are the wheels on the bus? Yes, they're a circle. This bus is special because it runs on electricity. That means it doesn't have to be filled with petrol or diesel. But instead, it can be plugged in and charged. It's got a big battery that stores all of the electricity up on the roof. Hi Gecko, do you want to come and see where I drive my bus? Yes, please. Mary sits in a place called the cab, and to get into the driving seat, she opens this door and climbs inside. Mary can then press this button to open and close the electric doors. There's lots of other buttons and controls for Mary to press in here too. To start the bus, Mary presses this button. I think it's time we went and picked up the mechanicals. Mary, can I buy a ticket, please? To buy a ticket, passengers give the correct money to the driver and she prints them a ticket. Mary can change the sign on the front to tell people where the bus is going. 
Hooray! We're off to my garage. Don't worry, mechanicals. We're coming for you. The bell on the bus goes ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. The bell on the bus goes ding, ding, ding. All day long. The lights on the bus go flash, flash, flash. Flash, flash, flash. Flash, flash, flash. The lights on the bus go flash, flash, flash. All day long. The tickets on the bus go print, print, print. Print, print, print. Print, print, print. The tickets on the bus go print, print, print. All day long. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish. All day long. Oh, hey there. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, beep, beep. The horn on the bus goes beep, beep, beep. All day long. Oh, ho. The doors on the bus go open and close. Open and close. Open and close. The doors on the bus go open and close. All day long. Hello, Red Mechanical. I hope we didn't keep you waiting there too long. Come on board, take a seat. The thing I love best about travelling around on a bus is looking out of the big windows and spotting things. There's lots of different shaped road signs around. This one is square. This one is a circle. And this one is a triangle. This one's very important because it tells vehicles to slow down because there might be children around. Hello, Blue Mechanical. We've had to stop at a traffic light because it's on red. There's three different traffic light colours. Red, amber and green. The red light means stop. The amber light means the signal is about to change. And green means go, go, go. This bus is very smooth and very quiet because it runs on electricity. That means it's even better for the environment than other buses. It's green mechanical. Hello. Right, I think that's everyone now. Let's head back to the garage. Can you remember all of the shapes we've learnt today? Rectangle Circle Square And Triangle Thanks very much to Mary and all the team at Ariba for taking us on this amazing bus journey today. What do you say, Mechanicals? That's thank you. We'll see you again soon. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye!